The speaker is one of the world's leading experts in autism, what we understand about it, what causes it. He's director of the Autism Research Centre at Cambridge, and he's going to present some pretty exciting new research that shows things that may surprise you. Please welcome Simon Baron-Cohen. I'm going to explore the idea that autism may be linked to minds that are wired for science. Back in 2001, Wired magazine suggested that there might be a link between autism and scientific talent. If it's true, this may force us to rethink the nature of both. The idea actually goes back to Hans Asperger, who was a paediatrician working in Vienna in the 1940s, and after whom a subgroup on the autistic spectrum is named. And he wrote that for success in science, a dash of autism is essential. Well, this was just one man's observation. But the idea was picked up by Ian James, who published an article suggesting that these two early physicists and these four early Nobel Prize winners all had autism. Sir Isaac Newton, shown in this picture, who discovered gravity, Henry Cavendish, who discovered hydrogen, Albert Einstein, who got the Nobel Prize for his discovery of relativity, Marie Curie, Nobel Prize for her discovery of radium, her daughter, Irene Joliot-Curie, who got the Nobel Prize for her work in nuclear fission, and finally Paul Dirac, Nobel Prize for developing quantum mechanics. All of them brilliant men and women of science, but all apparently had autism. Let's look at one of these examples in a bit more detail, Albert Einstein. He wrote, I do not socialize because it would distract me from my work. As a child, he was late to talk. When he did talk, he spoke with echolalia, or just repeating back what other people said. And apparently in childhood, he had no friends. Of course, there's a problem here using biographies, as James did, to diagnose people who are no longer living, because biographies are a very fragmented source of evidence, and so they might be unreliable. A more reliable way to test if there's a link between autism and scientific talent would be to look at living scientists, including mathematicians. Autism is more common in students who are studying maths compared to students in the humanities. And scientists score higher in terms of the number of autistic traits compared to people in the general population. So this is suggesting a link between autistic traits and scientific talent. To be clear, it's not the case that all scientists have autism. All we're finding is that as a group, on average, scientists show a higher than average number of autistic traits. And then if you look at teenagers with autism, they score higher on tests of mechanical reasoning, figuring out how a system works. Again, to be clear, it's not the case that all people with autism are scientifically gifted. It's just that as a group, on average, they're solving these little physics problems better than teenagers without autism. So it looks like autism confers some advantage in understanding the physical world, how systems work. And their aptitude is not just restricted to science. People with autism also show a stronger interest in systems more broadly. Systems might be mechanical, like this car engine. They might be natural, like the weather. Or it might be a library that's systematically organized. The thing about systems is that they follow rules. And when you're trying to understand the system, you're really trying to identify the rules that govern it so that you can predict how the system works. People with autism 
and scientists love to systemize. So where might this link between scientific talent and autism come from? Part of the answer is going to lie in genetics because we know that fathers of people with autism are more likely to be working in the field of engineering. So this is telling us that the people carrying the genes for autism may not have autism itself, but may have a talent in understanding how systems work. And this leads to a prediction that if the genes for autism are linked to good systemizing, then we should expect that autism would be more common in places like Silicon Valley. In fact, Wired magazine back in 2001 reported that autism was more common in Silicon Valley, but that was based on anecdotal evidence. Silicon Valley is a long way away, so we've been looking at a Silicon Valley a bit closer to home. Eindhoven is the Silicon Valley of the Netherlands. Eindhoven has the Eindhoven University of Technology, a bit like MIT. It also has the Philips factory that's been there since 1891, so that today, Eindhoven, um, the jobs in Eindhoven are about 30% in IT. And this is twice as high as other cities in the Netherlands. We found that autism was more than twice as common in Eindhoven compared to two other Dutch cities, Haarlem and Utrecht, that are not IT hubs. So once again, we're seeing a link between autism and scientific talent. Autism is more common in males, in boys, but is an interest in systems stronger in boys? We tested this in newborn babies on the first day of life by filming them for how long they looked at each of two stimuli. One was a human face, and the other was a mechanical mobile suspended above the crib. What we found was that girls looked longer, more girls looked longer at the human face, and more boys looked longer at the mechanical mobile. So this is suggesting that something about being male is not only linked to autism, as I mentioned earlier, but also to interest in systems. What is it about being male, or what is it that males might produce more of that might lead to this connection? Well, males produce twice as much testosterone, and prenatally, testosterone shapes brain development. We measured prenatal testosterone in the amniotic fluid that surrounds the baby in mothers who are having amniocentesis during pregnancy. And then we waited for the baby to be born. What we found was that higher levels of prenatal testosterone predicted more autistic traits in the child later, but also a stronger interest in systems. So prenatal testosterone, not gender, seems to be related to scientific talent. If it's prenatal testosterone rather than gender that's associated with scientific talent, this means that a good scientist is a good scientist irrespective of their gender. This is Rosalind Franklin, one of the co-discoverers of the structure of DNA, who sadly died in 1958 uh, four years before the Nobel Prize was given to Watson and Crick for related work. Some of you may know that the Nobel Prize is not awarded posthumously. And this is Dorothy Hodgkin, who was awarded the Nobel Prize for, in 1964 for working out the structure of penicillin and later for her work in vitamin B12. But back to autism. If autism is linked to scientific talent, this forces us to rethink the nature of autism. This little boy, is he has autism, and he's obsessed with the flow of water. In my view, he doesn't have a disease. Children like him need support, but they're developing differently, they think differently, and they're simply fascinated by how things work. And this is Gary McKinnon. He came to our clinic in Cambridge. He has Asperger's syndrome. Many of you know 
that his autism led him to obsessively hack into the computers in the Pentagon. He did this not because he's a terrorist or a dangerous criminal. He simply thought that the Pentagon com computers contained information that was in the best interest of the public's public to expose. He even left post-it notes on the Pentagon computer telling them that their security was poor. <laughs> People like Gary don't deserve to be punished for the mistakes that they've made. Their autism le left them uh, socially naive and vulnerable. Uh, but people like Gary and many people with Asperger's syndrome are unemployed, and we should be thinking about how to find them jobs so that they can feel valued and feel supported. Autism is teaching us about the minds of scientists, but minds wired for science are making us rethink the nature of autism. Thank you.